worship songs in order to learn stuff. We sing worship songs in order to like experience something. And in fact, over the course of the pandemic, that's something that I have missed the most, and possibly we have missed the most, is, is worshiping together and worshiping God together. And that there's something mystical about that and mysterious about that that we have, we have missed. And so I want, through this three-week series, for us to experience something, for us to allow God through his Holy Spirit to, to deal with some of our pain and to help us move forward together. And this is the same with the book of Lamentations. It's a book of poems designed to be read aloud together, designed to be heard together. It's meant to work on us and in us in a similar way to worship does. And we're going to do that. Next week, what we're going to do is read the whole of Lamentations together, out loud, just like they did one day a week every year in the Jewish calendar, which I'll explain a little bit later. And so we'll experience some of it next week. And then the third week, and this is where I'm really going out there, I'm looking for responses. I'm looking for you as a church family to write stuff down and to come up with some poetry, come up with some art, and we will reflect together in a way that we've not quite worked out yet. And I'm very thankful to Douglas Britton and Alice Buckley who have helped curate this series. A lot of the content for today is, is Douglas's and, and Alice has really helped us think what a reflective service could be like in a couple of weeks' time. I didn't want to teach through lamentations. I thought that would be the wrong thing to do. I want us to experience it. I don't want us to teach about grief and loss. I want us to work through the emotions of what that could look like. And it will culminate in the third week with us taking communion together and reflecting on the hope that we have in the Christian faith through Jesus. So what is the book of Lamentations? Well, the book of Lamentations expresses the humiliation, suffering, and despair of Jerusalem and her people following the destruction of the city of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in 587 BC. The author is traditionally seen as a prophet Jeremiah. However, it was more likely written for public rituals commemorating the destruction of the city, and in particular, the temple. Lamentations is notable both for the starkness of its imagery of the devastated city and for its poetic artistry. Like I mentioned earlier, the book consists of five poems. The first four are written as alphabetic acrostics, which basically goes through the Hebrew Bible from Aleph to Tav. And that sounds impressive, but I have absolutely no idea about Hebrew. And the fifth one evokes uh, the alphabet with its 22-line structure. So while Lamentations has for millennia been an important liturgical piece in Jewish commemorations of this festival, which is called Tisha B'Av, which is basically the third Jewish festival of the year, which means that every year the Jews lament. Every year they set out aside a day from morning to dusk, and they remember all the tough stuff that has happened to them, and they process that through. And I just think that's really healthy to have a culture of doing that. And as evangelicals, we don't really have that. Often we are like hyper-positive and are looking for cross T's and dotted I's and exact answers. And life's just not like that. And faith's just not like that. So I think it would be good for us to mimic this Jewish uh, tradition and find out what it's like for us to spend periods of the year reflecting and mourning together. This has been an important piece of liturgy. Lamentations has been an important piece of liturgy literally since the 6th century BC. So there's something for us to learn in this. So what's the summary of the book of Lamentations then? Well, I think it's this. Grief is messy. When facing or coping with great loss, 
people often have multiple feelings going on at the same time. I don't know if you've experienced this over the last 18 months, but sometimes you feel as if you've got different things going on in your brain at the same time. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes the feelings are happening at the same time and they're contradictory. I can find myself really surprised by what's going on in my own heart and what's going through my own head. And lamentation seems to represent this jumble, this jumble of moods by having lots of different themes and structures all overlapping each other. So I'm just going to work my way through the four of them just now. And I've got a question midway through for you just as you reflect yourself There are four themes that come to mind in Lamentations. There there may be more. Further meditation and prayer may bring out more. But here are the four that I have noticed. The first is that grief and loss are universal experiences. It's impossible to be human without experiencing grief and loss. It's natural. It's part of the human condition. Secondly, each person's grief and loss is unique to them. It's important for us to acknowledge the fact that your experience of the pandemic is not the same as somebody else's. And everybody's individual experience has been different. Thirdly, the book of Lamentations is a progression. Or maybe a better word for it is unraveling. It's a meditation on how loss can lead to somebody completely falling apart. There's no easy solution in the book of Lamentations. It ends in a very dark place. We don't get pat answers. It really is a book about what happens when things all fall apart. But the fourth thing is, the book of Lamentations is centered on God's unfailing love. His unfailing love to us and his unfailing faithfulness. And it's not just his love towards us, but it's also his love towards the people that we hurt when we are the people that cause hurt to other people. So firstly, grief and loss are universal experiences. The Book of Lamentations was one of the five festival scrolls, like I mentioned earlier. In each of the festivals, there would be a scroll that would form the middle of the festival. And Lamentations was one of the books for one of these festivals. And its purpose was to help them remember the destruction of both of the temples. You see, there's power in marking our grief together. We can support each other in our grief. No matter what divides us, We have all experienced loss together. And this is what I want to attempt to do over the next three weeks. I want us to attempt to grieve together. I want us to attempt to lament together. And it isn't just going to be me talking. We're going to do this in creative ways, like I was saying. So if God speaks to you, please write some liturgy, some stories, some art and bring it to the service or or get in touch, even help curate the service that week. Secondly, each person's experience of grief and loss is unique. We are all experiencing the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. Everybody's experience is different. I remember the first lockdown, and it honestly wasn't that difficult for me and my family In fact, there was quite a bit of joy in it because there was an opportunity for us to slow down. There was an opportunity for us to spend more time with the kids. And there's six of us in the house, so there's always plenty of people to talk to. That's completely different to some people's experience if you were working for the NHS or if you were working as a key worker. Very, very different experience if you lived on your own very different experience. Each person's experience of grief and loss is unique. And Lamentations reflects this. Each chapter is a separate poem. Each chapter is written in a different voice. There's the voice of the widow, 
the voice of the daughter, the man, the narrator, us. Each poem has had a different experience. Each poem responds differently. Chapters one, two, and four end with a desire for vengeance, but this vengefulness is absent from chapters three and five. And yet, Lamentations is used as a communal prayer and was written to a as a response to an event that affected everybody. Though clearly, different people were affected in different ways. And this is true of all forms of grief. There is no universal template that everybody follows. This was true during the pandemic. Everybody's experience is different. There's no right way to feel and there's no wrong way to feel. Everybody's experience is legitimate. Now, I just want to take a, a moment just now, just for us to uh, take a moment to reflect on a, a question. And you may choose to do this on your own. That might be the right thing for you to do. Or you may choose to discuss it. But my question is this. What was the worst experience in lockdown for you over the last 18 months? So just reflect on that and process that through, either on your own with God, or if you want to, you can talk to your neighbor, and I'll, I'll just give you... So four, four key themes from Lamentations. Number one, grief and loss are a universal experience. Number two, each person's experience of grief and loss is unique to them and is true and needs to be honored. And thirdly, the Book of Lamentations is a progression, or maybe a better word for it is an unraveling. It's an, a meditation on how loss can lead to somebody completely falling apart. The first four chapters of Lamentations are acrostic poems, which means they go through all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. But the fifth chapter isn't. It's kind of a demonstration of how things just kind of fall apart. It seems to symbolize that grief can lead to a complete unraveling. The structures that have supported that person's life have fallen away. The effects of loss and grief have built over time until they've reached the point of collapse and despair. The final verse of the book says this, this is the message translation. As it is, you, as in God, has cruelly disowned us. You've been so very angry with us. David Lee says, this is an astonishingly grim ending. We do well to meditate on this closure. It's interesting, like the book of Job, sometimes there is just no easy answers. Sometimes God leaves us with unanswered questions. And I think this is something people from our tradition, people that have come from an evangelical tradition, need to take real note of. Because for me, a lot of the time we look for easy answers and we look for cross T's and dotted I's. And that's just not life. And sometimes God brings us to the point where we actually don't have answers for what's happened to us. And it's okay to rest there and to lean into God in that place of despair. This is a theme of lamentations. Number four, the book of lamentations is centered on God's unfailing love. The book of Lamentations is a chiasm. That just means it's a symmetrical structure. And the key to this structure is its center. This form is common in the Bible. And we can see it just with the number of verses in each chapter, uh, in each of the five chapters of the book. 22 in 1 and 2, 66 in 3, and 22 in 4 and 5. It's worth examining the book and the symmetries that it contains. The middle of the book, the heart of the book, matters. 
it was written in a way where the center was the key, the center was the core. So right in the middle of the book, it says this, for no one is abandoned by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he also shows compassion because of the greatness of his unfailing love. For he does not enjoy hurting people or causing them sorrow. If people crush underfoot all the prisoners of the land, if they deprive others of their rights in defiance of the Most High, if they twist justice in the courts, doesn't the Lord see all these things? In other words, there is always hope. There is always hope. And no matter how much despair there is, no matter what you're going through, no matter how much your individual life has unraveled or your life in your community has unraveled, that there is always hope and God will meet us in that unraveling. There's been times in this pandemic where I just have found it incredibly hard just to put one foot in front of the other. Like I'm supposed to be a pastor and take care of people and sometimes I've just found it really hard myself just to pray, just to pray. And that's some of the the real kind of effect that this has had on us and that's okay. It's okay when things are not okay. It actually brings us right to the heart of our faith that it's not about us. It's not up to us. It's God that has done things for us, and it's God that will lead us through. We're just about to sing a song from Lamentations, and it's right again at the heart of the book. This is Lamentations 3. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And that's what I want you to take away from this morning, that even although it's been difficult and even although it's hard, we're not consumed because God will not fail us. He will be faithful to us.